Okay. Welcome. Yeah. I am so thrilled that you are doing this masterclass episode with us on Studio Class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have been wanting to chat with you in this space in our, you know, virtual realm for so long. And I am just so thrilled that you're here to share your thoughts with the listeners. As we get started, will you please just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm delighted to be here. Thanks. And also long time no see, Megan. I know. So happy to see you. <laughs> um, I'm Peiyi Chen. I am a soprano, but really like I just kind of do things with my voice. So, you know, voice type is kind of not so important here. Um, but yeah, soprano. And I right now seem to be specializing in contemporary music. Um, and But I also do a lot of early music and like stuff in between. But yeah, yeah the, the stuff I'm known for right now is is the contemporary music side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and where are you based oh, and stuff? Oh yeah. Um, currently just moved to Berlin last year. Yeah. Um, before that I was in the UK for like 13 years. And as long as we're going like chronologically backwards, um, <laughs> before that I was in the US, I did my undergraduate at Northwestern um, and I was born in Taiwan. So I'm Taiwanese and I'm American lived for a while in the UK and now in, in Germany yeah a citizen of the world truly <laughs> like, I know yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> amazing amazing I am so thrilled that you're here one of the things that I I really do appreciate is that you mentioned that you sing not only in contemporary music but also in in other styles and that's one of the things that I love having conversations about in this format too is that is when we get to have conversations about voice type isn't as like is as necessary in this because I am a maker of sounds and I do it in all of these different ways and I like to work with lots of people and lots of styles and I I am obsessed with that about you and your career and so I'm so thrilled that you're you know you're bringing us those perspectives and so one of the things that I like to ask everybody as we get started is what is an intention that you're holding for yourself right now? Okay, so I have done my homework. I got your questions beforehand. I wrote notes. Um, <laughs> or rather, I had like a think about it because, yeah. Um, okay, so I think my answer is um, I'm trying to be as honest with myself as possible yeah. and as honest and earnest, or mm. honest and earnest. Um, I like with those. My yeah, because I know I know that you know being earnest is kind of not cool, you know. I I kind of I I very much kind of wear my heart on my sleeve when I perform, and um, yeah. But I'm just I I I have never been one of like the cool kids, like you know, shrug French nonchalance. That has never been me. So I just thought I'd roll with that and and fully embrace my yeah. my earnestness and my honestness with with myself with myself. Yeah. When you're saying being honest with yourself, embracing that, what can you tell me a little bit more about what that means for you right now? Um. Well, it's kind of so for me. <laughs> perhaps touching on a bigger subject, I think that. Um, being a good human being helps you be a good artist like those two are like the same thing yeah and, um yeah and and you know to those people who say like well what about people who are like absolutely atrocious abusers and you know also make great art I say well think of how much more awesome their art might have been if they weren't like pieces of trash human beings yeah. um so that's, that's just that's just my take on it for now um yes. <laughs> Um, all 36 years old of my my career yeah. and so that's also a caveat that you know I'm sure as I grow and get older in my life that my viewpoints will change so what I'm saying is just like where I am Absolutely. in my life right now um uh you were asking me about um how how that looks like in in my daily life yeah so or in my practice and I think the answer for me is that um uh yeah it's 
it is deeply entwined with how I'm trying to be in this world as a human being. Yeah. Um, so yeah, kind of seeing my bad bits or what I what I think are my bad bits and going like, okay, well, yeah, those are me. I own that. Yeah. And also seeing my good bits and being like, I'm proud of that and own that, you yeah. know, and as a as a kind of um uh Asian. Asian, um, raised by Asian parents, um, often we're kind of taught to be like quite humble and, you know, not accept compliments and, and stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, um, I'm working on that, accepting yeah. compliments, um, especially when they're honest ones. Um, um, but also like in the privacy of my own mind, um, I, I don't have to be that kind of unuseful, humble to myself. Mm -hmm. If I did something that was really good I will say to myself like hey good job hey you did a thing you did a thing <laughs> yeah so kind yeah. of trying to see myself as honestly as possible the good the bad everything in between and um yeah and maybe not judging as as much and not commenting on it and just being like oh that was a thing okay yeah. right yeah. right just uh, um observing I think what we're going like observing I think our practice also is sound makers singers that observing without allowing ourselves to kind of like really be in judgment all the time is something that we need to practice is something that's really helpful about that and I find from a new music perspective that we make such a wide range of sounds that I've really tried to step back into an observing space of like the sounds that I'm making rather than constantly judging them good or bad. So I'm wondering if that's something that that has been useful for you, especially since we both have spent a lot of time in contemporary music. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, uh, what is good and what is bad like who gets to decide this uh -huh. thing <laughs> uh -huh. exactly you know, how did that how did that come about like even the the thought of like soprano that's a very kind of western classical music kind of thing right, right. and so if you're not functioning in that world that label doesn't mean anything and it's yeah it doesn't mean anything um it's just kind of shorthand for a, a series of characteristics right, right. and and so, um, yeah, I guess when it comes to contemporary music, um, you know, what is considered good or appropriate for one piece might not necessarily be considered appropriate in yet another piece. Yeah. You know, they occupy different universes and perhaps in those universes, the laws of physics are different for each universe. Yes. And, <laughs> and so you just kind of have to, um, yeah, you kind of have to get a feel for um, what 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 it's like to to um, be in in each universe and and perhaps you need to take that on a piece by piece basis mm -hmm. which is kind of tiring sometimes yeah. um but I suppose is like part of the fun when it goes when it goes well yeah absolutely I in in a different vein I kind of feel that we are all teachers whether or not we're doing that in kind of the the most straightforward sense in an academic setting, but I do think that we all pass on knowledge to each other. And I think that I would love to hear more about what is a skill that you love to teach? Mm, so I have to admit that I don't have any kind of private students. Mm -hmm. So my experience comes from kind of workshopping with other singers and other um, composers. Yeah. Uh, and uh, oh, and also just performers in general, dancers, yeah. actors, etc. Um, and uh, but I guess let me think of one that's like useful for for like when it comes to singing. Um, oh, I got and it. It doesn't have um, to be just singing either. So just know that this can be a very open ended question. But it sounds like you have right. one. <laughs> yeah, I think I think at least for singers, the one thing that I was told that I've kind of carried with me all of these years is um from Donatienne Michelle Donsac, I think that's how she says her name. Yeah. Um, and she said, don't sing the note if you can't hear it inside. Like, mm. do not 
do not when you're practicing when you're practicing like don't just like guess the pitch because what you're doing is you're wasting your phone the amount of time you have to phone it within the day right like we kind of have a certain amount that we can do without wearing ourselves out and so we need to be quite smart about that and I think um the way I interpret what she said was like if it's not clear in your brain it's not going to be clear coming out um and that could be pitch that could be dynamic that could be gesture color whatever like try try to play in your imagination as much as possible before you even try to sing it. Um, There is no shame in playing it on a keyboard or if you don't, if you're not a keyboard player, whatever your instrument is, just to get the pitches, get the rhythms. I spend a lot of time sitting at a table practicing and I don't sing. Sometimes I make no sounds. Um, Maybe I talk to the table and I'm like, dot, dot, dot. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yes. And, and um, yeah, don't, don't phone it until you know that your brain is clear yeah. um, or, you know, don't, don't, don't get to that step until you kind of started sorting your brain out. I think. Um, yeah. I love that as like a, as, as a piece of advice, I was just recently reflecting on how I used to feel like my voice couldn't do coloratura you know, couldn't move quickly. And, and it started to dawn on me over time that I was like, oh, it's because I, I just didn't, I couldn't concept the sound that I was trying to make. And therefore, it wasn't going to come out the way that I wanted it to. And that was one of the pieces of advice that really changed that around for me and helped me feel like a lot more freedom. with like moving, but I think you're so right. And I would love to hear, do you have any other thoughts about what I would call like silent practice or any of that. So when you are sitting at the table and you're working on something, give me some of the, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Like, what are you doing? What, what is between you and the score? What's happening? Okay. So when I get a new piece Mm -hmm. um, and actually I think this, I, you know, I'm saying like contemporary music, but actually to be honest, I kind of treat all music Mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and I guess in this case, we're talking about notated music. So let me like, at least, you know, narrow it down to notated music. Um, I, 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 I crash through it. Yeah. I crash through <laughs> it. I do like a really dirty, dirty, dirty run through. Like, you know, that thing I said about like, don't practice, don't phone it until you like know what you're doing. That That's not the step we're talking about here. Right. This is like, this is like when you're playing like the video games or something and like there's a map, but it's shrouded in mist. Yeah. Like you just have to like go on that map and like remove some of that mist so you know like what you're dealing with. Yeah. That's that step. Um, Absolutely. I figured that out um, for uh, myself when I told myself that uh, I should learn Barrio Sequenza 3. Because mm-hmm. that's like, you know, that's like standard rap for like yep. a new singer. And I'd never done it before. So I just like, it, the score was on my desk for two weeks. Yeah. And I just stared at it. And I was like, I, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to start. And then after two weeks, one day I was just like, okay, pay. you just need to like get over yourself. Let's just like sight read through this. If we don't remember yeah. symbols, we'll just like make stuff up, yeah. you know, like I'll just like clap or like I'll I'll stomp my foot like at this point it doesn't matter we just want to know the lay of the land and we for me it's kind of like seeing also like where I am what things I need to clarify what things might be difficult what things are probably need less time for practicing and you know again video game scoping the terrain yeah um so that's thing number one and then after I've done that I'm like okay so these are the sections, you know, and I might get, I don't know if I'm feeling really on it, I may get a post-it note and even like, you know, write bar to bar, you know, yeah. this to this is a chunk, this to this is a chunk. Yeah. And then um, sometimes uh, uh, you'll get scores where the notation is a bit trickier to read, like trickier than you would desire it to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, and sometimes that's is um that's rhythm in mm-hmm. which case um, I have no shame slash slash yeah. slash slash beat yeah. beat beat um uh, if it's um pitches if it's kind of like the 
harmonic spelling isn't quite right I, you know it's actually like an f sharp and really not a g flat yeah yeah or the way or or perhaps the way you're more comfortable thinking about it is you know horizontal rather than you know vertical harmonic relationships then go in and i i respell things sometimes like no one needs to know it's just for the it's just for me it really yeah. is just for me Exactly. So that's kind of like the practical stuff. And once I kind of do that, that's when I start the kind of really silent practice mm -hmm. where I'm like, okay, I'm sitting at the table. I, you know, tell myself, okay, we're going to do a line. Oh, I set a Pomodoro timer. Yes. Um, I don't know if you, for people out there who don't know, the Pomodoro technique is like, um, you can actually use a real physical timer or an app and you set it for, I think at 25 minutes, is that mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. About 25 minutes. And then you get a five minute break. And after a few of these, you get like a longer break. Mm -hmm. um, so I set my Pomodoro timer because I have a tendency to get um, a bit too obsessed mm -hmm. and forget to get up and go to the bathroom, yeah. go get some water, eat lunch, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Um, so these breaks kind of make sure that I'm not practicing in an inefficient way because when my, my attention is not there, there's no point going on either, right? Like right. rather practice smart, rather yeah. practice efficient than, I don't know, sit there for four hours and realize that you're no better than you started. Or in fact, I feel worse because I've just um, beaten myself up for the last two hours yeah because I wasn't in the right mood for practicing right well, and also so, that information is unreliable then if we're kind of in that headspace I f that's the part that I find is like if I'm in that space right. the, the recall when I'm trying to perform it or practice it later I'm like oh this is this is kind of trash information in my head <laughs> like, absolutely <laughs> absolutely you know like like yeah like you're kind of practicing in mistakes or something yeah. and that's yeah. not useful so yeah, and um, yeah, so I set my Pomodoro and I guess at this point we're we're down to like nuts and bolts and what I call like brute force practicing, which is <laughs> brute, force. brute force practicing, which is like, you know, you got to get those pitches and rhythms or whatever it is, you know, sounds um, in your mind. Um, this is, this is the start. It's like the hard physical manual labor bit of our of our of our work um and and that's when I start you know putting in the time and metronome good friend um tuning fork good friend um keyboards good friends you know any anything you have to kind of help you again like kind of like clarify your mind so you're not guessing quarter tones you're not guessing syncopated quintuplets or whatever anything that kind of makes it feel more and more solid mm -hmm. that's great so that's like that's like the kind of the the kind of basic musicianship step right and then and then while I'm doing that the next thing or actually I might do that even when I'm doing the kind of the crash through is to look at kind of textures mm -hmm. dynamics um, um articulation markings um, I always try to sing from full score if I can, if it's not like, you know, A1 gigantic. <laughs> um, and yeah, just because um, I think, I, I mean, even for like, you know, standard rip opera, full score, baby, because um, knowing what the textures are underneath you, who's doing what, what kind of support you have. And in new music, sometimes when the vocal material is, you know, perhaps quite instrumental and I'm not like, you know, front and center, that's mm -hmm. not my function. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe I'm a shadow. Um, I'm the I'm the tail of, of a glockenspiel hit. Maybe yeah. I'm uh, I'm tied in with the winds and and uh, and maybe the French horn or something. So like knowing my function, knowing my color. Yep. is really important because it makes it makes the dynamics and articulations make sense and it means that when I practice I have um a uh, uh I know um the technique that I'm going to practice also so like if I'm going for something kind of airy and it's uh I don't know uh low let's say it's airy and low 
then maybe I can tell myself like, okay, I don't need to do this one in chest voice. I can, you know, take my head down and it's going to be like, oh, right. Yeah, and I'll do right? it by itself. Yeah. Um, where it's maybe it's like airy and high, in which case, like, you know, trying to get like the perfectly beautifully well phonated yeah. you know, high thing is not what we're going for here anyways right. so like why why am I doing like trying to do like perfect bel canto technique when really what I'm going for is like right yeah so yeah. so again that's kind of like an efficient thing like kind of knowing my function knowing what I'm looking for technique wise because that is tied in with gesture yeah um and like the faster I can kind of try to figure those things out the the easier it is for me to practice and also the more fun it is I think Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. because then I get to start playing with colors really early on and when there are things that I don't know how to do um like distortion or growl at a certain range or something then then um I gotta go on reddit I gotta go on youtube I gotta you know ask the internet I gotta I don't know duct tape together from my toolbox so whatever tools I might already have like duct tape it together and like come up with like a thing that I could use you know (laughs) Um, and that's also kind of fun so yeah Um, that's amazing Yeah. So, and then, and then, you know, just like anything, it's kind of like a back and forth between like, okay, now let's get it technically clean. Let's let me get these nested rhythms as clean as I can. Now let's do it with articulation and all of the coloring. Oh no, that means that one bit of it onset, it wasn't clear. And so the rhythm was screwed up. Okay. So it's, then it becomes like this back and forth of like kind of balancing accuracy and and um, expressivity and and wanting both I am of the opinion that you can have both and you Mm -hmm. should always Mm -hmm. strive to have both it's not either or yes it's not either or (laughs) no 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 and um yeah and 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 that's kind of I I guess that's it and then like when it comes to performance time then you just like throw all your thoughts out the window and just trust that you've like done your work and you're just gonna go and tear your heart out on the stage yeah. and just yeah. put it there for everyone to see yes. the end, <laughs> the end. <laughs> amazing yeah. hey, can I yeah. ask you a very nerdy question which is yes, <laughs> because so uh, using so many things so I know that this is a very small part but I really appreciate your your wisdom on this which is using so many things with microtones different frequencies that kind of thing can you talk to me a little bit about what that was like to start learning how to practice that, right? When you approach that for the first time, especially I think coming from a more, our kind of Western art music education tradition, right? Is that we're like very diatonic in a lot of ways. And, and as vocalists, we're often taught in very specific diatonic patterns. And so approaching microtonal music or something that's really focused on other tuning systems or different frequencies can be very intimidating. I wonder what that path has been like for you. Yeah, so um, uh, if you can't hear it, you can't sing it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, right? That's yeah, a theme going that we've the... got at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like if, if I can't imagine it, I can't do it. Or like if I get it out, then it's just like sheer luck that I hit it, right? Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so there's that. Um, um actually you know what for all things awesome microtonal the person to talk to is Jeff Gavitt who is like amazing (laughs) um but I so I am not Jeff Gavitt I do not my my method is a bit more like uh, dirty and (laughs) non-scientific um but I I I appreciate that (laughs) yeah so like this is like the performer's quick and dirty way of like trying to figure this out one full score again full score and like look at why the microtones exist in this piece the the universe of this piece is it just a way of notating I don't know like early music just intonation like mean tone tuning in which case like uh with very little effort your ear will start getting used to these things is it uh yeah like what what is it or is it like kind of like microtonal in like equal temperament in which case like each 
each it, it is like each kind of quarter tone is like very a, a, like a square like a rigid yes. grid and you're yeah. going up there and and that in um influences how I practice so like if I know that there's like it's like a more kind of um yeah uh it's it's more like a just intonation kind of thing and there's like a fundamental perhaps the fundamental isn't being played by anyone mm -hmm. maybe it's not audible but it's like what all the other pitches are based off of at the very least I can try to use that as a way to tune so I'm like okay I'm the I don't know the uh seventh or I'm the eleventh or whatever mm -hmm. above that so then that's a way of working and then um when it's kind of more equal temperament then that's when uh apps computer programs yeah. um things like that that are more mathematical and more kind of rigid yeah. Um, I think help. Um, the one that I really like, unfortunately, somehow I can't get it right now in Germany after what? I've moved. It's called quarter tone piano. Um, yeah. because it's just like it's a keyboard and yeah. it's it's really easy in your pocket and it might not be like the most precise thing, but for a lot of things, it's good enough yeah. um and you can practice on the road with that very easily um I personally don't have a laptop so a lot of the um uh, max msp patches that one uses for that kind of thing I don't I have easy access to yeah so yeah so quarter tone piano app if you can get it get it mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna write that down <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah I'm... Sure. <laughs> just play around with it and then you know and then if the quarter tones are like ornaments if they're more kind of like pitch bends or something like that you know then pitch bend to your cart's content if yes. there are references to other kind of musical traditions then like I would go and listen to them and like try to sing along with it and just to like get it in my ear yeah you know yeah, and then, it, then it's like a more natural thing because I think at the end of the day what I I have I'm making music I'm not I'm not impressing you with you know numbers mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? like at the end of the day it's a it's a it's a piece of work it's a piece of art and I'm trying to do it like and so I think it needs at least for me like it needs to be in my body mm -hmm. so that's that's the most important thing whatever it takes to get it in my ear in my body yeah. right um is that useful? <laughs> That's, that is beyond useful. That's exactly what I was hoping you would talk about. So thank you. Okay. <laughs> because yeah, I think yeah. that it can be so intimidating to just kind of, I, and a lot of people are maybe getting that score, but like later in their, in their trajectory as singers, and they maybe don't, aren't in an academic environment anymore, or they're like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Or like, do I have the tools to help me practice this in a way where I feel like I'm actually making the sound and not guessing. And I think that's why I always want to have these kinds of conversations here. So if you're listening, then you have like, oh, I can at least, I know that there's a thing, this quarter tone piano like app that I could like try, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I think, um, you know, the other thing I often use is this app called ClearTune. It's really a tuning app, but yes. it can play I'm a big like- fan of ClearTune. <laughs> Absolutely. And it drones. You can make it play a yes. drone. Yes. And it can be like a pure sine wave or it could be like a dirty sawtooth sine wave, whatever you need to tune with. And sometimes just kind of singing against the drone is really useful. Or I recently, actually recently, last year, yeah. um, I did um Lucier um wave songs and it has like very clear kind of um uh uh, is it Hertz or is it Sense? Shit, I don't remember. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, that has like, I think it's really clear Sense. I must be that written in. Yeah. And so like with ClearTune, if you like click off the little um, thing that's in the, the center of the dial, there's like a little lock there. You can like actually like get the, oh, it must be you can get both hertz and sense um mm -hmm. i think on it and 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 um microtonal things and so i would just like spin the wheel to like the right pitch and make it play it and then like sing it so i could yes. feel it yes um yeah because that piece is very much about kind of 
of like pushing and pulling and dancing against these two other tones coming out from speakers on either side. So it's a very physical thing. And it, it, for me, at least it needed to be like a feeling, a, a ear thing. I couldn't, um, yeah, it couldn't be just like a, a math thing for me. So right. yeah, quarter tone piano, clear tune, um, look at the full score, understand what the function of the quarter tones are in this universe, yeah. and then go practicing. Yes, yes. And and enjoy your practicing like with these. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, actually, a thing that like um, when I was an undergrad, one of the composers that I was hanging out with showed me was he was like, um, play like half steps on the piano, like just play like F and F sharp or something. Mm -hmm. And like sing the F and then sing the F sharp and then try to sing something in between. Cause like sometimes if you've never done it before, you're like that you don't even know that universe exists. Yeah. You know, and try to sing something in between. And then like, you know, check is it like not F, not F sharp? Great. You've just sung your first quarter tone. Exactly. And now then the yeah, then the next question is like accuracy. And then from there you can work on, but like you kind of have to get like a, a little hole in that universe first and then then you're brave enough to like peel the yeah. the curtains you know yeah, and then exactly. like slip into that world yes right it def it yeah. definitely feels that way right <laughs> so yeah, so I really like, appreciate you taking the time to just kind of open open that up for us a little bit more which is just like no there is a whole thing here it can absolutely feel just as natural as singing in some of the patterns that you've been working in for a long time and all and it's not some sort of magical thing it's just like oh here's how we get into hearing those things right here's how we open up our frame of reference to hearing that particular pattern of sounds you know yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome Pay. Hey, i'm going to switch gears again and because we've been talking so much about I, practicing and kind of like the technical side of our art making, I'm going to switch us and talk a little bit about the technical side of our, of our careers, our business side, right? And I'm curious if you have, well, to, to set this up, you know, I'm a big fan of micro actions. And I feel like a micro action is something that you've like distilled down to it's like most manageable task, right? What's this thing where you can do it all the time. It feels very achievable because you've just distilled it down. So it doesn't feel like, you know, get a residency or something like that. Do like this. It's like, that's a lot of moving parts. Right. And so I feel like when we share some of our entrepreneurial thoughts with each other, it can feel very overwhelming because it feels like, well, how am I supposed to get to that? How am I supposed to be doing this? Like full, experience when I don't know what the first like actionable step is so that's why I get kind of interested in talking about micro actions with each other so I'm hoping that you could share a micro action that you feel like has helped you feel momentum in your career or just kind of helps you feel like you're doing something actionable towards making more of the experiences that you want to have right um Okay, so um, admission, uh, confess. I'm a terrible hustler. No. Awful, awful. Like if you're if you're talking about hustling in like the kind of traditional sense and like all those self help books, I am I am not your girl. No. Um, everything I have to say, everything that has come my way that has been amazing has been because I was just kind of doing my thing, yeah. and um, you know I have. A, I have they're not like incredibly high standards but I have expectations for myself I take pride in my work I yes. show up and I try to do the best that I can yes. with what I have um and I try to do it with as much joy as I can because I know that being a musician is being an artist is a privilege no yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. right so I try to have um a good attitude not for other people for me yeah. and I try to have the standard for me again it's I it, there could be nobody in the room and I will still try to do all of this um yeah. and so people have just kind of seen me while I was like doing my thing and and then um and then things just kind of magically happen I know that's not useful so let me say the useful thing um 
again, going back to the thing we talked about earlier about, you know, being a good artist for me is being a good human being, yeah. right? It starts from trying to be a good human, like yeah. a good egg. And, yeah, and it idea. kind of reaches into the art, right? And and that the art making is a reflection of how I would like to walk through this world as a human. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I'm quite shy and um, a bit awkward sometimes. And so I'm always really grateful when someone goes out of their way to put me at ease yeah. or try to make me feel welcome and comfortable. So when I can when I when I when I have the opportunity to I try to do the same and that has been the thing I think I mm-hmm. think that has been the thing that has is my micro gesture yeah um that's the thing um you know be like hey my name's P.E. how are you doing wow that piece you know we're working really hard I know it doesn't sound quite lovely yet but you know we still have two more days like don't worry don't worry it's gonna yeah. be fine do you know where the coffee machine is here are some gummy bears, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and just kind of being, showing up as like a real human being, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. yeah. because the other person is not festival director, composer, yeah. famous yeah. performer, whatever, you know, at the end of the day, they're humans. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so just trying to be a, a, a nice human yeah. with them is is all I is all I can say because okay to talk about it in a slightly more cynical way I suppose um at a certain level at a certain level once you reach a certain bit of your career everybody can sing everybody is good at what they do um and um the thing that makes a difference is whether or not you are a joy to work with Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm and yes. and you don't want to of course you don't want to fake that right mm-hmm. um but and and uh, a joy to work with is everyone has their own way of doing that some people are really quiet but really intense some people are gregarious and really just like 200 percent here for you and and all of those are necessary in our in our field and all of those are a joy to work with and so showing up honest mm-hmm. earnest for me um and and um having fun even when the work is really hard um I think is 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 the thing that makes a difference being a human right yes Yes. yeah I love that yeah and and to be be honest um now I am kind of luckily in the position where a lot of the things that come my way I haven't auditioned for I mean I haven't auditioned in five six years something like that and I think it's because I am slowly building a body of work or a, a way of working where um, it's not just, I'm not just another soprano. I'm, I'm payee, I'm me. Yeah. And yeah. you know what you're getting. Um, you get this personality, you get this work ethic, you get whatever tools I've duct taped together from my toolbox. So, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, that's either your thing or that's not your thing. And if that's your thing, I'm happy to be there. And that's not your thing. Um, I'm happy to be your friend, but we don't have to work together. Right. And so yeah. I think being human, micro gesture, being Absolutely. human, just keep on trucking. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think some of the things that you pointed out in this are also you've you've consistently built your body of work in a way that really shows that you have the skills that that person might be looking for right and in such a way that people are like I'm going to remember I'm going to remember working with you not only for who you are as a human but also for who you are as an artist and I would like to do that again right and so do you think that earlier in your career obviously at the time where you probably were doing more auditions and doing things what kinds of opportunities and experiences were you looking to bring into your life so that you could build a reputation for the things that you do I'm not sure if we're always thinking about oh I want to build specifically this thing but I think I think we can in hindsight look at like well I, I ended up like really applying for these types of things or I really wanted to be in this space oh quote unquote this space you know right I um I know that uh, sometimes people are told, you know, like, think about your brand, think about what you're good at. Yeah. 
I do not know what I'm good at. All I know is that I do the thing that I am given mm -hmm. as well as I can. Maybe that's my brand. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and to be honest, so like when I was starting out, um, you know, there would be projects that I do because, um, well, buying groceries is nice. Paying rent is nice. Yeah. Shall we just say? That? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> um and so there are those kinds of gigs and also doing those I you know every chance I get to sing is a chance to practice yeah. you know technique whatever like it's a chance to practice so that's great if I'm being paid for it even better mm -hmm. so I will take that um and then I had some projects perhaps that weren't so well paid or were with friends and so like not paid or whatever but they were keepers of my soul mm -hmm. keepers yeah. of my heart yeah there was those were the things that kept my 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 heart fulfilled yeah um because sometimes for gigs you know whether it's like a jump in for a choir thing or um a new music piece that I'm like really not digging or whatever sometimes I take them and sometimes it's like oh sorry this sounds really bad you can cut this out later if you want <laughs> sometimes you i feel like a music prostitute where like they don't it doesn't have to be me. you know it doesn't have to be me it's just yeah. like they're just looking for a body yep. that does yep. that thing yep. and I am the body that does that thing I am so and, not cutting this out <laughs> yeah yeah new like and it doesn't it's not just like you know early like new music it's not yeah. just for new music be anything there yeah. we all have these experiences mm -hmm. and my I had this feeling early on like if I do too many of those and I didn't have projects that were like keepers of my soul mm -hmm. then then it would be quite easy for me to I don't know turn into one of those you know in the orchestra where they're like leaning back on their chair and playing and they just kind of you're like why yeah why why are you there yeah <laughs> you yeah know, it doesn't mean anything to you anymore right. that kind of thing right well, because and I, you aren't really in it anymore it's just you right. just doing the the thing that you do without your your person being a part of it your artistic voice being right. a part of it. it doesn't have to right like, not every gig is going to be like the fullest expression of your artistic voice but like but there are de there's definitely a difference right yeah, yeah when you kind of feel like you're just another body and mm -hmm. and that's you know I hope I never get to that and when I was beginning I, I was very careful with myself I was like if I ever seem like I'm towing the line towards that mm -hmm. I hope one of my friends will be very honest with me and be like hey what's going on because like this is what I'm saying and I hope that I have the courage to be like okay clearly this music thing is not working and I need to do something else right um <laughs> yeah so 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 yeah um yeah so I, I kind of had like categories of gigs for myself and I have to say I think my intuition of of what I need yeah. is quite strong and yeah. I it's always a balancing act for me mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's why I'm a freelancer and I don't belong in like a radio choir or an opera house or something yeah. like that because um I I just I need a bit of variety in my life and I need a bit of balance and I need the freedom to 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 figure that out on a well on a day by day basis I suppose um and also on a longer trend basis yeah. so yeah and um yeah and and I I I also had lovely friends who had nothing to do with new music mm -hmm. you know ran choral societies and whatever and um, offered me like solo gigs just stepping in for a concert or something and even though that wasn't quite the direction I knew I was probably headed in I took them anyway because again it was a chance to practice being on stage mm -hmm. it was a chance to practice to learn repertoire that I probably wouldn't have otherwise learned um, it was my friend being super lovely to me and giving me this opportunity and I love working with friends so there's that you know so so there there are all these things that I took when I was younger that you know added to what I am today choral society gigs singing in a tiny village church um uh doing graphic scores lying on the floor um you know um 
going to Darmstadt and being really freaked out, going to Impulse with you yes. and like not knowing my ass from my elbow, and, <laughs> but like, you know? So I'm glad okay, I wasn't the only one at that. <laughs> no, can, I, can I tell you the story of Impulse to me? Because like the, the time that we met. Yeah. Um, so dear listeners, um, dear Megan listeners. and I met at Impulse Academy in Graz. Yeah. Um, I don't remember when, how long ago that was. So this would have years. been 2015, like yeah. February of 2015. Mm-hmm. Right. So I had just finished my master's and I was like, I think I'm probably going to go towards like more contemporary music because I don't scare easy. Yeah. So I think that's the only requirement, I think, for new music for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, you don't scare easy. And you're, you're okay, like, figuring it out along yes. the way. Yes, um, <laughs> that's 100% it. it. <laughs> yeah. It's just like courage and naivete. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think actually we should start a new fach called contemporary music. And it's like <laughs> everybody who didn't find a fach to belong in, but is willing and curious is welcome to join. Yes, um, I, I'm I'm here for that. <laughs> yeah, only requirement, curiosity and bravery. Yeah. Um, uh right so anyways back to impulse so um yeah we we met um I didn't know very much about anything um and and do you remember Petra Hoffman the the voice teacher definitely there? yes yeah she was like very much like a traditional singer shall we say she was very much of the opinion that like if you cannot sing your Mozart you have no business singing Beaufort which I like I get I get that's not entirely my opinion but I suppose there is something to be said about if the repertoire you're singing with comes from the lineage of western classical music then yeah sure having the tools to do that I get it um anyways micro action coming in my creation story I was just a human with her I was there to learn I was not there to um be seen because yeah. I know I knew that I had nothing to show yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I you know some people were really experienced they knew pieces they knew things yeah. I knew nothing I was really 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 there to be a student and to yeah. learn from her and and I I uh, you know, had great respect for her because she was like the soprano, the soprano oh for the Yes. Right. Yes. Um, you know, giant cheekbones, high notes, like no one's business. Yeah. For days, just like yeah. unending. Yeah, just like, <laughs> and at our last lesson, she asked me, you know, it's been a joy working with you. If you were in Germany, I would love to take you as a student. And I was like, sadly, I live in the UK and have no money. So, yeah. um, <laughs> and she was like, can I do something for you? And I was like, what? she was like, can I do something for you? And I was like, well, I wasn't prepared for this, but I would love to sing with an ensemble in Europe. I would love to do, cause I, I besides doing solo stuff, I love on like chamber music making. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to not be in a choir, but I wanted to be in a vocal ensemble because I adore that. Yeah. Um, and she was like, have I got the group for you? Let me do the introductions. And then after, you know, a couple of very long, actually it might've been like six months or something like that. And then I came in on my audition for Shola Heidelberg, which is mm-hmm. the ensemble that I work with a lot right now. And from then on, um, I got to work a lot on my musicianship skills, tuning, pitch, rhythm, um, because we have absurdly long rehearsals um, times for projects. Mm-hmm. And so it, it gave me a chance to kind of grow and figure things out as a musician yeah. and, and also really challenged me. Like the first thing they booked me for was Prometeo by Luigi Nono like I was in the vocal ensemble part and I was scared shitless <laughs> it was like really quiet amplified two and a half hours with no breaks yeah, and right. you know a big huge festival with like uh yeah it was just like it was like the real deal and I was like oh yeah. I and as I was packing my suitcase I realized that I had no German I knew how to say yes and no and hello and yeah. goodbye I did not know any German bar numbers I knew mm-hmm. nothing mm-hmm. I knew nothing 
And remember what we said about courage and naivete? I just said, well, they knew that I only had English when I did that um, audition yeah. and they booked me anyway. So I'm just going to trust that they know what they're dealing with as I pack my suitcase. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, uh, how many years later, yeah. you know, I think I started singing with them in 2000, maybe 16, 17. Amazing. And, and so many years later, I'm still with them. See? Um, yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. So, yeah. Be a human. Yes. Be a good human. Do your best. Yes. And that will that will shine through in your artistic work. That is my only advice. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And also just be you bring both of those things, which is I do really want to to highlight your incredible work ethic and the the standards that you bring to things. So it's it's really both of those things because people want to they recognize how how strong you are in those things and they want to be a part of like helping you take that farther into the world right and yeah that's super important so both of those things it's it's like showing up bringing your best self to the work that you're making as well as bringing your best human self to the experience those are two really really important things yeah and also I think sometimes showing up and bringing your best self isn't always like sometimes what we're taught at conservatoire that like no chinks in your armor you know yeah. show up and like you're like super strong no like sometimes being vulnerable not knowing things but being willing to ask questions and really being willing to listen mm -hmm. and learn like that that is in some ways that is more useful of an attitude to have than going like oh my god I must know all the things before yeah. I show up Right. You know, and having to be this well. like statue of a person who has all of their things together. Right. I think there's a difference, like work through as many of the things that you can before you get there. But when you're Absolutely. there, like it's OK to ask questions and also be malleable enough to try things. That's like the other part about not being a statue in those experiences. Yeah, yeah, because like that's the part that's like kind of like fun. It's like being like, a kid again. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you show up. You have your ideas, but you're like, you're ready to play. Yeah. But rehearsal is like playing. You're like, okay, we're all together now. Let's figure some of this out. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were going to play spaceships, but I guess we're not playing spaceships. I guess we're playing Arctic Explorers. Great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That's totally it. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. And, yeah. And again, I think, I think having a good attitude is, is like the most important thing. Everything else, you'll figure it out on the yes. along the way. Like, That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I really want to make sure that I leave time for this. We've been having such a great conversation, but you also have so many things that are coming up. And I want to give you a chance to kind of tell me about things that you're excited about. What's really activating that sense of play for you? What's feeling like um, a really positive working situation? Any of those kinds of things. And... I don't know if one can get through all of them, but I, I really want to hear just like what what's filling you up these days musically? What are you doing? Yeah, so um, I have a I'm on a disc by Samuel Andreev um, mm -hmm. with Ensemble Proton Band. It's a pro uh, a pro a, la, 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 a portrait disc. That's yeah. the word portrait disc of Samuel um that's coming out I think in June. Great. So that'll be nice. Um, new work by him for voice and ensemble uh that's coming out I have uh made a little project for myself it all came about I'll, I'll try to keep it short because I know we're like running out of time but my my friend and like uh I kind of she doesn't I don't think she knows she's my mentor I feel like my <laughs> But she kind of is my idol. Um, shout out Juliet Fraser. Yeah. Um, she got in contact with me to say like a while ago during the pandemic lockdowns to say like, hey, you know, she has this person who's like a private donor and she's kind of trying to dip the, the donor is thinking about dipping her feet into kind of arts philanthropy and wants to start kind of small and if I had some ideas of like something that was small like can I pitch some projects to her she has a couple of people that she wants to like think about and choose from and so I was like well the recordings I've been sending out are like 10 years old so yeah 
probably should do some new recordings. And one thing kind of led to another. So she had an amount that she was um, really happy to give me no strings attached to work with. Great. Really generous. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, let me just like see what kind of funding things in the UK are available. And I landed on a help musicians. Um, they're like a yeah. charity um, for, for, well, for musicians. Yeah. And um, one of the things that they were willing to fund was um, uh, recording, like specifically recording projects. Yeah. And it didn't have to be classical music. It could be like, you could be a rapper, you could be yeah. a, a rock musician, doesn't matter. And so I filled out the application, first ever grant application, first time lucky. Yay! I got the money. And so I was like, okay, Thunder Thunderbirds go. Um, yes. <laughs> so, so on top of all of that, my pitch was like, okay, well, we're going to record some stuff. But like, why don't I ask a good friend of mine, Angie, if she can like shoot some video while we record? Yeah. And of course that will limit like her ability to move around so much, but like, we'll talk it through because during the lockdowns, I realized like how many videos I was watching mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. recording. Mm -hmm. And my first port of call when I'm like looking up repertoire is not Spotify or Apple music. It's actually like YouTube. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, I, I want to be in that pond. Yeah. Um, so, so like one thing led to another. So Angie's working on the videos. Um, Aaron, my husband, did the the sound. And and I was like, well, but these pieces aren't just like pieces. They're like pieces that have been with me for more than a decade. Right. And really what I'm doing is like a love letter to them. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, I should write something about that. So that's the project. The project yeah. is videos, recordings, a bit of text about yeah. like um, how I got to be in contact with these pieces, my process of working with them. Cause like two of them are Michael Finnessy pieces that don't get done a lot. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and one of them's a Jennifer Walsh piece. And, and uh, it has been done by some other people, but you know, I kind of love the story of how Jen kind of trusted me with the score. So I'll write about that. That's yeah. another thing. Um, and then lastly, stage things coming up. Um, I've just started working with this group called Nico and the Navigators. Oh, fun. Nico, yes, Nico is a real person. Yeah. Nicola Huxley is her name. And um, yeah, so they put together these kind of extravaganzas where the last one I did was at the concert house with the concert house orchestra here in Berlin and it was two actors two dancers three singers yeah. uh a band and and then the orchestra and and the there's a theme the thing is um ecstasy and oh. loops they yeah. wanted to play John Adam Shaker loops and how yeah. the shaker kind of through repetition and movement and um kind of found this kind of ecstasy so that yeah. was like our jumping off point and then we all brought like text music dance whatever and all together and I sang I sang a, a bel canto aria I sang some Barbara Strozzi I sang some Beatles yeah. uh, I was gonna sing some yeah yeah yeahs but it got yeah. cut so, <laughs> like that's my I realized that's my happy place mm -hmm. not just like classical contemporary music but kind of the whole range yeah, right <laughs> and on, on top of that like um they do like kind of close-up cameras uh live cameras for for the staging so yeah. our faces are kind of um shown on the screen behind us like giant screen yeah so so there's also a bit of like um kind of close like film acting that's yeah. that's thrown into the mix of like live theater yep so it's really interesting because you know when you're in theater you're like thinking your movements have to be like this gigantic uh -huh. but when the camera is like right, right there, there. <laughs> right. like it then then actually everything on your face immediately shows mm -hmm. and um you have to I at least for me I have to be really real mm -hmm. and really earnest and honest yeah. with my facial gestures and very careful with them um, because everything shows yeah. um yeah and and that's like that's a new space that I'm exploring this kind yeah. of the the camera the sometimes I'm covered in blood rolling on the floor while singing a pop song <laughs> sometimes I you know like all of that and yeah. um it's that's my happy place uh, yeah. a melange a melange yes. of stuff I love that. and 
Yeah, so we have we're doing a revival in December of that the 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 show that I just talked about, and I'm going to be working with them on a new thing called the Truth About Lies um, mm. next year. Don't know what it's going to be yet. Don't yeah. know. I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. But I guess we'll find stay out. Stay tuned. Is the yeah. <laughs> like we gotta have fun? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's so that's sweet. my that's my update. Yeah, I love that. Well, hey. And- you said, you know, kind of piquing your curiosity and you know that I'm a, I'm a big fan of curiosity. I think it's, you know, a superpower that we have as humans. And that kind of brings me to the question that I love to ask, which is what's something that you're deeply curious about right now? Oh my God. Okay. Again, I did my homework and I was thinking through all of my questions because I have so many questions. Um, <laughs> I think the one that's probably the most pertinent, and actually I'd be fascinated by what you have going on for you, Megan, is how do you juggle practicing for like multiple projects at once? Because at this point, I'm kind of like, oh my God, oh my God, I just finished a thing, but the next thing is coming. And so I must practice. And I would love to have like a longer term, like project planning thing with like <laughs> spreadsheets and stuff. Oh my God. I don't know. Like, how do people manage it? Like, I just feel like I have a plate spinning in the air and something's going to drop and like break at any oh, moment, no. which is a good feeling. <laughs> no. um, yeah. And, and so like, I would love, um, lovely people out there also lovely Megan um (laughs) if you have like a project planning thing or a secret to just like tell me because I I'm so curious and I would like to like stop being so stressed by my inability to plan in advance (laughs) that's it that's my question for the world I love that. Okay. Well, that definitely brings me to the part where we talk about also where can people like connect with you? Because maybe we want to share these things more openly and we can all kind of talk about them together, right? On on the interwebs. Where can people find you on the interwebs so that they can like say, hey PE, I heard you on studio class. And here's the thing that I like to do, right? <laughs> Excellent. Yes, please. Please hit me up. Um, I My website is peichen.com, which is spelled P-E-Y-E-E-C-H-E-N. And um, I'm sure, you know, you'll you'll put it somewhere, somewhere. So it'll be there. There's a for- <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. There's a form to email me um, on there. So, uh, yeah, hit me up. Let me know your project planning templates. please. <laughs> And um, other than that, I'm not really on Facebook, um, but my Instagram is there, but it's mainly like me eating cake. And <laughs> I feel like very worthwhile. Yes. I yeah, want- <laughs> it's, yeah, it's mainly like running and like cake. Yes. So, it, but, but like that probably like shows you more about my life than anything else. So like if you're into cake, Yes. Then please join me on my Instagram and it is payee payee. So it's just my first name times two, nice. um, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's basically it. I have a Twitter account, but I've never really quite gotten the hang of yeah. Twitter. I know you're like the Twitter queen though. So, you know, I... Yeah. But also you like know. Twitter has changed so much in the last like, you know, few years. And, and so it's just yeah. like, you know, ebbs and flows, everything has natural ebbs and flows in life. And you're like, okay, well, it's not quite the same as it once was. (laughs) Also, I'm a great fan of, because now I live in Berlin, a place where some people occasionally visit instead of a village called Slawit in West Yorkshire. Um, Just hit me up with the email and I'd love to meet you for a coffee in real life. I I love meeting people. We, We can chat and go eat cake. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is an amazing invitation. I was like, I'm going yes, I'm I'm to mean Berlin. it. Amazing. Hey, we will have to talk. Maybe we'll do a bonus episode or something like that where we talk about where we talk about project planning or something like that. It'll be our little like mini bonus episode. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. You can just teach me all the things about project planning. And I will just be there with like starry eyed and taking serious notes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because we all like develop our own like 
plan and process for how long does it take to learn something how and especially like difficulty levels and what does it take to get this piece embodied versus can I just make sure that I do it you know the, all of that kind of stuff oh, Absolutely. I, I'm with you I I mean we all develop that over time and then what you're saying is like as your career goes and you have you have so many different types of projects happening throughout the year I love that stuff. I too am a big fan of like variety in my in my artistic life. And so I want to have all these different ways of making music with other people and have them all in my life all the time. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess my question is like how to do it so it's not like triage. So I'm not like who's bleeding out first, who's right? gonna die first. Let me practice that, you know, where, where it's like more of an elegant and yeah. like fun, playful solution. Right. That's what I'm after. Not triage. No. <laughs> and and I think that especially in the new music side, when you're working with people and things are coming into being, is that sometimes we end up in a in a sticky preparation place, which is like, I just got the score and I'm about to perform it. So really this is the amount that gets and and that's just the real <clears throat> the real version sometimes is like you are you are figuring out how much time can I actually apply to this thing versus you know and that that you, sometimes you don't have those like sometimes you've got a lot of time to really just figure out oh okay what do I want to do with this I know Tony Arnold has a, a wonderful suggestion about where when she gets a piece and it, uh, it's like already composed and you, she knows that it's coming up later is that she loves to do the part, the, the, the dirty read through and like starting to do all of like the kind of get in there with notes and rhythms and all of that kind of stuff and then put it away for two months and then bring it back out. And then, and I think a lot of us that when we are able to put that process into, into action for what we're doing, it's so beneficial and that can't always be the case, but it definitely helps you feel like you've processed the music, given it some time to grow in, you know, in your brain and then come back around to it and be like, oh yeah, it's hitting on a different level, right? Yeah. Rather than what I feel like we can so easily get into is, is the triage portion of getting gigs, learning music for that thing, and then it happens and you're like, okay. And then you're like on to the next one that feels just like that. And so <laughs> like, I yeah. absolutely 100% sympathize and empathize with, with what you're, what you're talking about. So we will do that at some point. We'll create a whole, a whole extra like chit chat moment because I just love yes, listening please. to you so much. <laughs> same, same, same. So cool. hey, thank you for coming on to studio class. Like this is such a, I don't know. You just make my heart so happy. So I really appreciate you having this conversation with me in a way that I can share that with other people and they can hear all about your wisdom and your grace and your honestness and your, your, and your earnestness and all of the things that I really appreciate, appreciate about you as a human as, and as an artist. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone. <laughs>